What's our work in exile? It's to work with our captors for their peace. It's to work with our culture and those around us for their peace. It's to work for the shalom of God in the city where God sent us. I know this is the time where we start to stumble over this. What does it mean that when you find yourselves feeling out of sorts, when you feel like you're in a culture that doesn't get it, when you feel like you're released from it, when you're trying to figure out what it means to be in the middle of it, what is it we're supposed to do? We're supposed to plant gardens, build homes, eat the fruit they produce, marry, have children, have grandchildren, stay there a while. Jeremiah says you're going to be there 70 years. Stay put and flourish. And while you're flourishing in exile... Work for the shalom of that place. See, that's interesting to me because right at that moment, I keep thinking, um, I would want to get out, right? I want to figure out how to get back. I like hearing that it's King Nebuchadnezzar who took us into Babylon because I can rebel against King Nebuchadnezzar. But what about when twice in the text, Jeremiah goes out of his way to say, God put you here. Yes, judgment. Yep, absolutely. Disobedience, okay. But he says you're going to be there 70 years, which is a good way of saying y'all aren't getting out. Marry and have children, have grandchildren, and I will rescue them. If you're faithful and seek the peace and the shalom of God in that place, well, then I will come. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. What's your hope? That if you work for the peace of the city, if you work for the shalom of God in that place of exile, your grandchildren will know deliverance. Exile is tough for us because we don't think in terms of generations. We don't think in terms that God may be at work in the middle of the very place where we feel as if we're most exiled. We have a very hard time understanding what it could be like to be captives and be told to stay there and flourish there and see that your captives flourish. What's it like for the church for the next generation in this post-Christendom world, in this world where we may not be able to, we may never be dominant again? I have on my desk a newspaper from November 1963. It's one week after Hollywood, uh, after uh, John F. Kennedy was assassinated. The Warren Commission is on the front. If you slip to the back, you see at the very back of the first section, it's the religion section, and there's an article on Hollywood Presbyterian Church, my home church, 9,000 members strong. It's the reason why somebody gave it to me. I looked at it and thought it was interesting and read all about it and read about those glory days back in 1963. And then I noticed there in the corner, in the Los Angeles Times, you could look up every single day a Bible verse for the day printed by the Los Angeles Times for people to read their Bibles one generation ago. I was born four months later. In my lifetime, we've gone from the LA Times telling you to read your Bible to people at Starbucks, not even feeling guilty when they skip. The world's changed. We're in exile. What do we do? Let's be clear. Some of us feel like we're in exile in our denomination. It's been the metaphor that's been used all over the country about the change in our denomination. Whether that's your experience or not, I want you to know this. Whether you're in exile in the denomination or not, I want you to know this. We got to agree we're in exile in our culture. We're no longer in the culture that supports our faith, we, and yet we are called to do work together in the middle of it. What is it that we do? Work for the shalom where I sent you. For me, what this means is to recognize that the God of the universe who is already at work, the God who created this universe, the God who puts up kings and takes down kings, the God who can call someone like Cyrus the anointed one, the God who can say that he can use Nebuchadnezzar, 
The God who's at work even in the exile can say to his people in the exile, you need to flourish here. 